So yesterday we talked about finding the greatest common factor and I pretty much saw everybody, the most mistakes I was seeing people make is on 16. So why is 16 a little bit trickier? There's different variables. So that means in your GCF, what variables should you have? No variables. So it should just be six because this one has P's and this one has Q's, but they don't have anything in common. So if there's no common variable, then you cannot pull a variable into your common factor. Unlike number 15, number 15 does have a common variable. What variable is that? X. X. So when you guys did this, you found that the coefficient was 5, and then it should be X to the what? Why is it X to the 2? Yeah, how come? Okay, Diego? Uh-huh. Okay, this is what they have in common, right? So again, common, they both at least have two. So in your GCF, it should have two. It can't be more than that because this one doesn't have more than two. So it has to be the least variable. If it has a common variable, pick that and it's the lowest exponent. So for example, if it was like x3, y5, and x5, y3, then the GCF would be what? Uh, three, three. X3 and Y three. Three. X3, Y three. This one has three X's, this one has three Y's. So you've got to go with the lowest variable. It's not subtracting them, it's just picking the lowest one. Brennan. So if the Y had a five? If this Y had a five, then it would be five in the GCF. Yeah. Yep. If they both had fives, then it would be five in the GCF, okay? So just to review exponent rules, if you're multiplying, that's when you add. If you're dividing, that's when you subtract. When do you multiply an exponent times an exponent? When there's parentheses, a power raised to a power, good. Okay, so again, let's reiterate. The whole reason that we're doing this is because we're starting to work backwards. We're starting to go from me giving you a trinomial or a polynomial and you working backwards to the binomials or the trinomials that were multiplied to get there. So remember, with factoring, you're breaking it down into pieces that you multiplied by. So for instance, at the very top when you were doing prime factorization, you broke 18 down into two times three times three. Because two times three is six, six times three is 18. That's the prime factorization. You're breaking it down into a multiplication problem. So remember, with factoring, the goal is always to break it down into a multiplication problem. And the way we're going to do them today is we're going to talk about factoring out greatest common factors. So when I say factoring out, what that means is basically pulling something out using division. Okay, so look at this, for example, right here. First of all, let's review. What's the degree of this binomial? Two. What's the degree of this binomial? Three. Why? Three is the biggest one. So the degree is three, which makes it a... Nope, it's, it's a binomial. It's a cubic binomial. So this is a cubic binomial because cubic means it has a degree of three. Cubic binomial. And why is it a binomial? Because there's only two terms. So we talked yesterday about how to find a GCF of a set of numbers. Now we're going to talk about how to factor out a polynomial by its GCF. So basically what that means is taking a polynomial and factoring out whatever it has in common. So turning it into a multiplication problem. So I'm going to do one with just numbers to try to give you the idea. So let's say I had 15 minus 25. What is the GCF of 15 and 25? Five, right? Five goes into both of them. So if I'm factoring out, essentially what that means is I take five, I put it outside the parentheses, and then inside the parentheses, I take each of these. If I pull out a five, that means I'm dividing. So what does the 15 become? A three minus five. These two things are equivalent. All right? These two things are equivalent. We factored out a five. So we took the fives that this has in common with this, and we pulled them out, and that left us with 3 minus 5. The only difference with what we're doing up here 
is that this might have a variable in it. So the first thing you have to do is figure out, just like we did here, we figured out our GCF. So what would be our GCF of this binomial right up here? What would be the GCF of 4x3 minus 6x2? What do you think, Brendan? Uh huh. Yeah, you would distribute, and that would give you what you had to begin with. But remember, we're like working backwards here. So this would be your answer down here because we're working backwards. So we're saying, I want to turn it into a multiplication problem. The only difference is now here I have two terms. So what's my GCF between 4x3 and 6x2? 2. So 2 is the number. 2 is the number, and then what's the variable? Well, yeah, but I need a GCF. X2. X2. Why is it X2? Because X is the common variable, and they both have at least 2. This one has 3, but this one has 2, so you have to go with 2 because it's at least 2. Brendan? So how is it treated by binomial? Because it has two terms. Cubic means it's to the third degree. Oh, you were just naming it? Yeah, just naming it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so now we factor out this GCF. And again, factoring out means dividing. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to break this down into a multiplication problem where one of the terms is the GCF, so 2x squared. And then inside the parentheses, I've got to divide to figure out what this is. So again, back to this number example. We found the GCF was 5. And then 15 divided by 5 is 3, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. So we turned this into a distribution problem. We broke it down into a product. All right? So my first term here is 2x squared. How many times does 2x squared go into 4x to the third? So it goes in twice, and then how many x's would be left? X, just x1 or x. Okay? Because when you divide, what do you do with your exponents? Subtract them. So 3 minus 2 is 1. So 2x squared. How many times does 2 go into 6? 3. And then if this x squared, x squared, do I have any x's left? No. So then that's it. So that's my factoring out by GCF. So I divided by the greatest common factor. And now I've broken it down into a binomial times a monomial. All right, so find your GCF and then divide it out. Now, how could I check to make sure this is right? I could redistribute it to check, but I don't have to, all right, because, again, this is your answer. Okay, so take a look at this. How would I do this one? What's the first thing we have to do? Find a GCF. So what's our GCF with 10y3, 20y2, and 5y? Probably 5. 5 goes into it. Does it have a variable? Yes. yes? What? And how many of them? No. 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 1. Why 1? This is a 1. You've got to pick the smallest one because this one has a 1, but it doesn't have any more than that. So you can't make it anything bigger than that. Pick the smallest exponent Yep, of the common variables. If it doesn't have a common variable, there is no variable in the GCF. All right, so now we factor that out. And again, factoring out means we divide each term. Okay, so our GCF goes on the outside of the parentheses. And then inside, how many times does 5 go into 10? Twice. Twice. So 2 with how many y's left? Y2. Because you've got 3 here, you're taking 1 out. So you've still got two left. What will be the second term? 4y. 1. Because you're taking 1 out, so you have 1 left. And then what about here? Plus or minus? Minus 1. OK, because 5 goes into 5 one time. If you take a y out, are there any left up here? 
No. So again, how do you figure out how many y's there are? Because it's division, you subtract. subtract. So it's 3 minus 1 gives you 2. 2 minus 1 gives you 1. And 1 minus 1 gives you none. Okay? So again, you're dividing by each of those numbers. And now here's your answer. And the reason that we're doing this, because right now, if I were you guys, I would probably be thinking, this looks more complicated than that. So why would I do this? Because it looks like I'm making it harder. The reason that we're doing this is because ultimately, this is how we're going to solve these types of equations. If I said this equaled 12, right now, you guys would not, maybe, would probably not be able to solve this because it's got exponents. So ultimately, the goal with factoring is to get rid of all of those exponents so that you can just solve for a variable. Okay? So that's kind of like a, in the future why we're doing this. But until now, here's the step that we're working on right now. How do we factor out a greatest common factor? Okay, let's try one more. Let's try one more. So first things first, we have to find a what? Okay, what's the GCF between 12 and 8? 4. And then is there a variable in it? X. Just one x, though, right? Because that's the smallest variable right here, exponent 1. So I'm going to factor out a 4x. What would I be left with here? Negative 3. x or no x's? None, because there's one here, one here, so none left. All right, and what about here? Negative 2 with 1x. Good, Brendan, why? Yeah, 2 minus 1 is 1, so we have 1x left. All right. What if I had done this? What if I made the GCF negative 4x? Then this would have been a positive 3, and this would have been a... Okay, which one's right? Both. Both are right. Okay, either of those are right. It really just depends on what you want to do. I like to have my first term in here be positive, so I would probably have factored out a negative, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, either one of those is right. Go ahead. Totally. To switch the signs in here, you just change this one to a negative. We could have done the same thing in here. We could have made this a negative 5, and then it would have switched everything there. But it doesn't really make sense to do it there because they're positive already. Yeah. Okay? So again, my goal is typically to make the stuff in here positive. All right? Is that how I want that written usually? No. No? How would, it, that, how would I prefer that? If I were writing it in standard form, what would this look like? 2x, 2x plus 3. Why? Yeah, you want, the, it, the, you want the, it to go in order of degree from biggest to smallest. And the degree of this is 1, and the degree of the 3 is 0. So typically, you would write it as negative 4x, 2x plus 3. It doesn't really matter. It's going to matter when we start solving them. But in that point, I'm not really giving them to you out of order. OK, that's a lot of stuff. I would like you to try. Three. I would like you to try 6, and I would like you to try 8. Okay, go to your boards. All right, so all of the terms that we factored out here, all of our GCFs were monomial GCFs. So that meant all of them had a common term, but it was a monomial. So what we're going to talk about Thursday, but we're going to briefly discuss right now, is what do you do if they have a common binomial factor? So take a look at this right here. Somebody explain to me what's going on in this problem. Yeah. OK, so there's like two distribution problems going on here, right? This first one is being multiplied by what? The first one is 7 is being multiplied by x minus 3. And the 2x is also being multiplied by x minus 3. So they have a common factor. But what is the common factor in this case? It's not a monomial. It's a binomial. They're both being multiplied by what? x minus 3. X minus three. So instead of factoring out a monomial like you did before, you're factoring out a binomial. So what ends up happening is you say, OK, well, first, I factor out my common binomial. And then what do I have left? I have 
7, negative 2x. All right, so we factored out, instead of factoring out a binomial, or I'm sorry, a monomial, we factored out a common binomial. So you took it and put it on the outside, and then what you had left was 7 and a negative 2x. All right, and this is the first step we're taking into factoring by grouping, which is what we're going to do on Thursday. But what we're doing right now is just recognizing the binomial factors. So again, these have a common binomial factor because you're multiplying both of them by the same thing. So we take that out, and then what you're left with is the 7 minus 2x. And it's a multiplication problem because remember, factoring is determining products. So what's my common binomial factor here? T squared plus 4. So T squared plus 4 is our first factor, T squared plus 4. We have to put it in parentheses because it's a binomial, so it has to stay together. All right? And then what do I have left? What did I take out and get left with here? Negative, Negative T. What about here? One. Why? There's an invisible one right here, so it ends up being negative t plus 1. Perfect. Okay, so our common binomial factor here was t squared plus 4, and then what we had left was a negative t plus 1. Brendan. No, because it's... Think about how you would actually do this problem. And if I were to do this multiplication, I would go here and here and here and here. So because the distribution covers the fact that it's multiplied by both, you don't need a squared. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Sort of. The, you're not squaring this. It's, not, it's just in both of them. But this covers the fact that you're multiplying it times both of those things. All right, because when we do distribution here, or if we did the box, it would be multiplied by all of that stuff. Okay, so what's my common binomial factor here? Yeah, but the second one says 4 plus x. It's the same thing. So does it matter? No. So when I write my answer, what would it look like? Times what? Perfect. 9x. Minus 5. Okay, here's a real... Does this have a common binomial factor? No. Why? Okay, this is not the same as this. How come it was okay up here? Because it's addition. And what can you do with addition? You can flip it any way you want it. But can you flip subtraction? Ah, I want to say yes, but not the same way. You told me this right here. What kind of x is this? And this is what kind of 3? Negative. Can I change this to a negative 3? Diego? Yeah, what do you think? Okay. Like over here and add, like, so I can change this to a negative 3 plus x. No, 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 because the one right oh, I like this one. This one's fine. Uh, okay. I could do that here too. But I can't just do that, right? I can't just slap negatives in without changing what? To what? Negative. So this needs to become a negative 4. Good. So when I rewrite this problem, it's going to be 5x minus 3. And then this is going to be minus 4, negative 3 plus x. Now are these the same? Yes. So when I write my answer, it would be x minus 3 times what? 5 minus 4. Yeah. It's exactly like eliminating. Where we like distributed a negative all the way across? Yes. It's exactly like that. As long as you change this, you can change this. Okay, Because you can always factor out a negative 1 or multiply by a negative 1 without changing anything. Okay. 
So all I want you to do here is I want you to determine if it's got a common binomial factor, how would you write it so you combine it? And if it doesn't have a common binomial factor, then you would just leave it alone. Okay, so I would like you to do these first four. Up to 67 at your boards. Go 